Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today we want to talk about client and server architectures. We want to see on how they are working and why do we need it in the first place. So first of all, we want to take a short introduction round in our theory session where we want to talk about client servers in general. After that, we want to create with the Dart shelf package a small server for our own where we access with multiple clients to that one server. And last but not least, I will show you some tricks and uh, bits where you can set up your own server and host maybe your websites. And now without further ado, let's get started. All right, in order to explain you a little bit easier how client server architecture is looking like and how it works, I would like to put on my teacher's clothes and now go to the board and explain you how it works. So on one side, we have our clients. So we have our mobile phones that are working as we know, right? Our small devices. Then we have real computers, like we know them from, uh, I don't know, desktop computers. They usually have also their monitors with them and keyboards and stuff, right? So I can draw so good. And on the other side, we have also IoT devices today. I call it just IoT, like smoke detectors, washing machines, things that are connected with the internet somehow but they don't really have the power to really calculate stuff. They are getting more powerful nowadays, right? So we make the calculations usually on these things, but some of the parts like payments and stuff, we don't really want to rely on a client because it is easy to modify and change. So what we want to have is some kind of connection point. We call that thing the internet, right? So there is usually something like this and there is like the internet. And now on the other side, if we connect it to it, we have usually also something, and this is look like this more. It looks like a desktop PC, but without a monitor, but actually they are our servers. And now we can have different possibilities of servers, right? So this is our client server architecture. We want to connect somehow, the internet could be also an intranet, so something internal or with LAN connected but we have always clients on one side and they can be one or multiple. And we have a server which comes from serving, so it provides information for us. So this server is on the other side. Now they uh, connect and talk with each other in, uh, for example, with the internet via so-called HTTP verbs that we will discover also in the next couple of sessions. And now with this connection, we have the possibility to make requests. So this computer make a request, the internet gives this to the server. The server does the calculation, for example, payment, if you have entered your credit card information. And now the server sends us the response, like for example, hey, perfect, you did all everything right. And then we get the answer back to our computer and we can say show here an acceptance mark. Perfect. What we also could do is like Firebase, for example, real-time communication and broadcasting. That means we send a message to the server, the server calculates, and what happens next is the response goes not only to one client, it goes to all clients simultaneously not really necessary for payment systems, but maybe important if you want, for example, make it that all clients uh, directly know in which state they are. Cool. So this is the foundation. If we know that, let's head over to the computer and have a look how we implement a Dart server with shelf. And after that, maybe we connect one or two clients to it. Shall we start? Let's get started. That was very insightful. Thank you, Teacher Weber. Sure, no worries, with pleasure. All right. But next, we have also to discuss different tiers and layers. So we talk usually about different architecture tiers. There is, for example, the really special tier one possibility. So that one client is also their server. That sometimes happens if, for example, UI and uh, server information and backend are all on one computer. 
together. Sounds a bit weird, but this is possible and we will show that today. Another possibility is the tier two section. So that means we have one client, one server. That is actually what you saw on the whiteboard right away. And the last possibility is the so-called N tier, yeah, or free tier usually. Then you have also the server, which gets the requests and do's information and database segregated. And last but not least, we have the N tier. So with the end tier, you have multiple instances behind of each other where the middleware is supported, where you have maybe different microservices and each and all of them are running on own servers. If you think now, hey, geez, but what is the cloud at the end? Uh, at the end? Nothing else. Uh, the cloud is just uh, hides a lot of stuff away from you and you can pull up new computers as soon as you need them if you need more resources. So this is the idea behind cloud. Cool, but now let's get into the computer and see how the code is actually working. Oh, oh hey, um, this is the right moment where you hit the like button, subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. And now let's get further with this content. Okay. So we talked now about how this stuff is working, how it is connected and how we can put all that together. And now you can see already this is VS Code. And yeah, I know I work with VS Code. The reason is pure Dart is not easily to develop in Android Studio. So that's why we use Visual Studio Code here. If you have, of course, an IntelliJ license, you can also do it there. It's much easier <laughs> as you can hear me. But usually uh, I know that most of you use VS Code. So I don't uh, want to pull too many people out. So inside of here, we have uh, two plugins installed. The first one is Dart, which is well, important for Dart development. And the other one is one Dart Pro. It's just the color scheme that I like to use. So now if you press F1, for example, you can see here that we can create a new project in Dart and let's head that directly. And you get a list of different possibilities. And we want to take the last one, a web server built using package shelf. So if you select that one, you will get asked where you want to install that. I will take the file, the uh, folder that I already prepared for us. And after some seconds, it will ask me for a new name. So we call that Dart um, Server Tutorial. Great stuff. Uh, bup, 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 code previous stuff. That is good. So, and after some seconds, we will find our boilerplate. And what you can see is we have a bin folder where the server.dart is inside. This is the file that we can execute because you can see already the main file here inside. Make that a little bit larger that we can read everything. So we have the bin folder with the server inside and some files. And if we take a look into pubspec.yaml, we find the shelf information. So this is important because shelf is actually our Dart server that we will use. Of course, you can write all of that yourself and that would be maybe easier because to read because as you see already, it does some stuff like Google Cloud Run, we respect the port. We have some port ideas and handlers already with middlewares and handlers and stuff. But without taking too much eye on it, we want to just understand how this server is working. And after that, we want to execute it. So I will turn away the files so that we have more view. And what you can see is by default, we talk always about local host or the, port, uh, the IP address 0000. And what does that mean? This is the server or this local host explains that it works on your machine. That's very interesting. So if you are on a server connected via um, a remote desktop, local host is usually where the server is running, even though that it is getting access from outside with a different IP address. That's good to know if you have a hint for that uh, purpose. After that, we get like a parser that does argument parsage. Okay, so we get uh, the arguments from here and we take the port option and then we parse them. But this is not really important. We get a so-called port. A port is like a gateway and a port is something that we are allowed to go through. In our case, we allow to go through 8080. So if someone asks the server with localhost 8080, then we will allow him to access this server. After that, we will have some uh, namings. Like for example, if the port is null, we want to throw an error. The reason is if there is no port supported, the server is not reachable, so we don't have to start the server anyway. 
After that, some shelf information comes, like the handler, where we create shelf pipeline, we add a so-called middleware and a handler. So as I said, we shouldn't be too worried about it. But what happens here is we pass something in. This shelf lock requests is a middleware and it will lock everything inside of the terminal while the add handler will execute this echo request whenever we call any request to the server. And now let's have a look what that looks like. So we call server IO serve. So with the handler, hostname and port, this actually starts up our server, which is just a process in the background that is running and waits for information from us. In order to make it more uh, visible what we are doing, I opened up a terminal here and we have now here inside our darts server tutorial. And if I now execute this main file like dot bin, uh, sorry, we have to execute it with dart in front of it. So bin and then server.dart. And if I hit now enter, you will see something magical happen serving at HTTP localhost 8080. All right, now you would ask what is localhost 8080 and why you use it? If some of you already recognize the HTTP, this one is actually a so-called web server. So if I open up, for example, our Firefox and enter this localhost 8080, ooh, we get a response. So our browser immediately knows that request for empty. And if we take a look here, we can see also, hmm, we get something called a get. This is the HTTP verb where we will have more look into future episodes, 200 and slash. That means we call this call here with nothing behind the slash. So if I say, for example, hello and press enter, you see I requested an information at slash hello. And if we take a look, what happens is we go to this echo request handler here and it returns us with the shelf response, OK. So it says this OK says 200. We are happy with the result. And we return here the string for it. Request, request URL. Perfect. So now with that, we have created our own server already. And now you would say, hmm, is this really a server? And yes, it is. So for example, we have now seen that the browser can access it, but also we could also just curl it. If you don't know what curl is, curl is a web server request tool that you can use inside of your um, terminal. So if I now enter here curl HTTP request, you can see, aha, uh -huh, we also got it from here. So this terminal here is our server. As you can see, it is still running the whole time. It waits for requests. And if I'm now here just entering, uh, I don't know, client one, then you can see, okay, this is the first client and we always serve them how we want. But if we come from the browser and now say client two, it's also serving this one. So we get also the information from here. And I could also now have multiple of these requests and I could maybe automate that that makes re regularly requests to that server and it can do something for us. So there is only one point of where we change something. All right, that is now all good and fine. But what would be the next step? The next step would be that we serve a website, right? That we send HTML through the server back to the client so that the client can maybe uh, show some websites to it. So now let's have a look how this works. All right, in order to add now this um, HTML website, I created already a public folder in our project and the index HTML, which is just some boilerplate HTML. And our server should now serve this file. So how can we do that? We first transform our method that we have here. And now I'm getting into troubles here. So cool. And change that to a usual method. And inside of here, we first want to read the file index.html. So I prepared, of course, something for that too. So we want to make an async request to a file that we create. And this file has this path. So we get to the directory current path, which is the parent folder. And we serve the public index HTML and read that as a string. And now we can pass that into this OK. So this is a string because it's the file itself. And we will pass that down. That's it already. With this short change, we will get now a website here. So I can curl that again and we get a request. Ah, something is wrong. 
we didn't get the real response. The reason for that, and you can already guessed it, is hot reload. Uh, if you are coming from Flutter, you usually are getting used to that things are getting automatically updated. In server world, this is unfortunately not yet the case. So we have to restart the server, unfortunately. So now we have restarted the server. And with that, we get now, if we curl for it, the website. Fantastic. But now let's have a look how does look into the um, browser. If I reload here, oh, that looks weird. This is no HTML at all. My browser should interpret that, understand that this is HTML. And for that, we have to open up the so-called inspect inside of it. Here we find the network tab. And if we reload inside of that, we get all the network requests that the web is doing. And if we click on this specific one, we get all the information about the HTTP word and all the information about HTTP in general. And the interesting part is here comes a so-called content type. And this is text plain. What does that mean? It means we receive from the server the answer, hey, I send you pure text. Please understand it as pure text. And this is what our browser is doing and magically. It understands, okay, this is text, so I don't have to create a website out of it. So let's change that, right? So head over to our Visual Studio code again. And inside of our OK, we have to pass in a so-called header. So let's see. All right, so to make it possible to read this result as HTML, we have to pass down an headers. And this headers is a map with a string to something. And this is content type to, I think it's plain HTML. So, and just to make sure I have that also in my copy and paste part. So have a look, what is that? Because it's getting read. Ah, it's text HTML, of course. Great stuff. But now you can see the headers is green. And if we now navigate again to our server first, we have to restart our server again, right? So I cancel that and start it up again. And now asking for it, on this part, it is exactly the same because a console window cannot understand something differently than text, right? But if I reload here, ta-da, we have a fantastic website. All right, so this is how we do a website. And now let's head over and get the rest done. All right, now you know how to create your own Dart server and you saw how we can connect with multiple clients to that server to receive some data. You got your first web page. Now you are able to send it to your friends. You have now uh, an own project that you want to work with, with a real own backend. Now you have the beginning or the first steps on how to create that. I hope this session helped you because in the next couple of sessions, we want to take a bit more deeper look on how to create a backend service with Dart and how you can use it to maybe improve your Flutter applications, create your own backend if you don't want to rely on um, backend less systems like for example Firebase. All right, and now there is nothing else to say than if you want to see more about Flutter and Dart, hit this like button and subscribe to our channel. And if you are feeling especially uh, generous today, you can also hit the bell icon because as you know, my videos is getting now a bit more flexible. So with that, you get already notified when the new video arrives. Also, I would love to see you in the live stream. So hopefully we will see us there. And now thanks for watching until the next time, bye. Hey, you, yeah, come closer. Hey, hey, you are still here. Uh, this is the right moment where you hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. Thanks for, and now let's go further, right?